since Cubase 11 came out, we have access to Frequency 2, that is the advanced EQ plugin included on the Pro version of Cubase. And now we have access to Dynamic EQ, which is great. So let's compare Frequency 2 with another EQ plugin that has Dynamic EQ, that is used by several mixing engineers, including myself, and that is the FabFilter Pro Q3. What is going on? Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. I hope you are safe and well. If you are new here on the channel, don't forget to subscribe, to click that notification bell, to share and to like if you enjoyed this video. Okay, now let's talk about the new plugin, part of Cubase 11, Frequency 2 that has Dynamic EQ. So let's compare this one with one of my favorite EQ plugins, the FabFilter Pro Q3. Let's jump in Cubase and check this out. Okay, so now first I'm gonna just show you some, some basic differences that we have between those two plugins, but I wanna mainly focus on the Dynamic EQ side of those two plugins. So first, you know, what we have to start with, with frequency that is on the left, we have access to eight bands of frequencies that we can play with. Now, on the other side, on the Pro Q3 side, to start with, everything is blank and you just need to double click on uh, that center line here and that will create one band of frequency each time. Now, you can add up to 24 band of frequencies, which is quite crazy. You know, I never, never go that far, but you can if you want to. Um, so that is actually pretty nice. If we go back on the frequency two side, we have also different modes. We have the stereo mode, we have also the MS, and also the left and right mode. And the cool thing about this plugin is that when you activate one of them, let's go back to MS, what's gonna happen is your first band, if you activate that on the first band, uh, it will split the first band in two, two different frequency points, okay, or filter points. One for the center and one for the sides. This is actually pretty cool. If we go on the Pro-Q3 side, we need to just select one of the frequency point or band to access the parameters. And then we can choose uh, right here on the side between the different modes. So we have stereo, we have right and left, mid and side, okay? So uh, all of those are independent. They will work on only one band at a time, opposed to what we have with uh, um, with the Frequency 2 plugin, which will split the band in two. So that is the main difference. So if you wanna add a mid-side um, EQ on the, the first band, what you need to do is to select mid to start with and then select the second band and you select side. And that's how you do it on the uh, Pro-Q3 side. Same for left and right mode also. Let's go back on the frequency side and this time I'm gonna activate linear phase, which is right here. Uh, to do the same on the Pro-Q3, you select a band and you go at the bottom and you have zero latency, natural phase and linear phase. So there's one extra option, which is natural phase. Now on the frequency two side, we have the keys right here, the piano keys that we have access to if we want to, and we don't on the Pro-Q3 uh, plugin. Now the Pro-Q3 plugin is an advanced EQ plugin. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it has a lot of options and a lot more options than what we get with frequency two. Uh, for example, it will have auto gain. Okay, so if you activate auto gain, um, the plugin will compensate, the output of the plugin uh, will compensate for the EQ moves you are doing. So if you're boosting frequencies, it will adjust itself by bringing down the output level. So this is very cool. So if you want to balance things out without having to just always play with the gain knob. On the Pro-Q3 side, we also have gain Q interaction that we don't have on frequency. Um, and that is actually pretty cool. So if you activate it right here, uh, that will actually interact the Q level with the amount of, uh, of gain that you're adding or that you're reducing on the band. So the Q value will change uh, the louder you get or the quieter you get on each band. This is actually pretty nice. Now, if you look at the filters, uh, on the Frequency 2 plugin, we have uh, the peak filter. We also have uh, the high pass filter on the first one, uh, which will cut uh, from 6 dB per octave, 12, 24, 48, and 96 dB per octave. A low shelf, a high shelf, and a notch. If we go on the Pro-Q3 side, now we have a lot of different options. Uh, we have low cut, bell, low shelf, high shelf, high cut, notch, band pass, tilt shelf, flat tilt. And also the amount of dB per octave when we're talking about high pass filters or low pass filters, we have way more choices. 6, 12, 18, 24, and it goes up to brick wall if we want to. This is actually good for sound design in some cases. 
Now we have more little differences between the two plugins, but I want to focus more on dynamic EQ. Now, if you look at the dynamic EQ side of frequency two, this is the new addition to frequency, which I really, really like. So let's check this out. We have dynamic EQ on every single bands, and we also have this single view that we can activate to have access to all those parameters that we get, especially with the compressor side of each bands. So what we get here, like you saw on my last video, we have all the compressor parameters. Uh, we have ratio attack release and also the threshold. If we go on the Pro-Q3 side, I'm going to activate also a uh, frequency band. And to activate a dynamic EQ on the Pro-Q3, what you need to do is just to bring down that big knob here, but on the external ring right here, which is, uh, which is going to turn red when you're going to uh, move the mouse over it. So this is going to bring up or down the gain of the dynamics section only, okay? Not the actual band, only the dynamic section which is quite nice. So I'm actually used to that. And then there's the Q right here, the, the Q uh, parameter. But opposed to what we have in frequency two, everything is automatic except the threshold that you can, uh, you can uh, just set up as an automatic threshold. Or if we click on auto, we can actually just uh, bring it down manually if you want to. So we can have access to a manual threshold or a auto threshold. On frequency, we have access to everything. Nothing is automatic. So we, do, we don't even have auto release. Everything is manual, which is great because it's going to give us a lot of options and a, and a lot of control over each band, which is great. But on the Pro-Q3, everything is automatic. But it does work great. I've been working with this uh, Dynamic EQ since this plugin came out, and I was never disappointed. But I'm going to have to admit that it's very cool to have access to all of those parameters. Also, this is one of the main differences when we, uh, we talk about dynamic EQ within those two plugins. Now let's talk about sidechain and how those two plugins are going to manage this out. First, on frequency two, we have the choice between internal sidechain or eight external sidechains, which is great. On the Pro-Q3 side, we have access only to an external sidechain, but only one for the entire plugin. No internal sidechain whatsoever, and only one external sidechain for the plugin. So let me show you how that works on Pro-Q, and then we'll jump on frequency. Now to activate the sidechain on the Pro-Q3, I'm going to click on Auto. Then you are going to see this little guy here, the small button that I'm going to activate, which is going to activate the sidechain. Then I'm going to go on top, and there you go, I'm going to activate the sidechain on top. What I can do after is just to open my settings and uh, check for a source, which is going to be my kick drum. I'm going to then open my kick drum channel, and I have the sidechain already set up. So the kick drum signal is going straight into the sidechain of the Pro-Q3. So let's have a quick listen. So you get the idea. So the uh, the dynamic EQ is reacting according to the signal coming into the sidechain of this plugin, which is the kick drum. And this is why we only have um, the, the compression going on when the kick comes in. Now, the downside is that you only have access to one sidechain, one external sidechain per plugin, not per band. Now, on the frequency two side, it is a bit different to work this out. Uh, let's work on the third band right here. Um, and now to activate, to make sure that the, the dynamic is going to work, you need to bring the gain down. Okay, this is something that, that is a bit different from the way the Pro-Q3 will work. Yeah. At first, I was a bit confused. I was a bit lost. And then I heard a voice, a voice of wisdom. Chris, you need to bring the gain down, man. <laughs> on the frequency plugin, the gain, the main gain is going to be the same gain for the EQ band and the gain for the dynamic EQ, the compressor as well, um, opposed to what we get with FabFilter Pro Q3, which are independent from each other. So we have my band gain, and I also have a gain for the dynamic range, okay, but not on frequency two. The dynamic range and the main gain of the band is the same knob. So that's why I was a bit confused. Um, so what we need to do here, so if I want to bring down uh, the, uh, the dynamic range, I just need to bring down the gain. 
and then I can play with my Q. Now that Dynamics is active, we will have Dynamic EQ. Now we're gonna activate our external sidechain and get the kick drum to be the signal feeding the dynamic EQ. So I'm gonna click on the sidechain, make sure that the sidechain is actually active. As input, I'm gonna select uh, any sidechain um, is gonna be good. It doesn't matter which one it is. So I'm gonna select a sidechain one. I'm gonna click on the top to activate my sidechain on this plugin. Click on the, the um, sidechain routing and then add the kick drum as my main sidechain and there you go and then I'm gonna open my kick drum channel to make sure that everything is okay and we are good to go let's try this out now the cool thing compared to what we get with the Pro Q3 is again add the access to all those compressor parameters So if I bring my release super fast, since most of the compressor parameters on the Pro Q3 are automatic, it's hard to get this type of effect that I'm actually getting with frequency two. And that is the advantage of having access to all those compression parameters. Very cool. Now I just wanna add something up here. When we look at this start knob here, you know, you're probably asking yourself the question, what the heck is the start knob? Um, and that is part of the initial problem that I had at first with frequency. Uh, okay, now to recap, we have the gain here, okay? Now the gain is again is gonna go for both the dynamic range and also the EQ gain. So if I bypass the dynamic, I'm just gonna hear that EQ cut and that's it. On the other side, on the Pro Q3, if I bypass the, uh, the dynamics, I'm not gonna hear anything. I'm not gonna get that same cut with the regular one because I need to bring down the band also if I wanna get uh, the band down. But the band is also gonna bring down extra dynamic range, okay? So uh, they kinda work together in a way. Now the start knob here is actually very nice. So this is the starting point of your dynamic range. So let's try this one out on this band. That is pretty cool. Let's do it the other way around. I'm gonna deactivate this band, activate this one, and uh, let's bring it to uh, just a bit lower. There you go. Again, I'm gonna use the sidechain one. And this time around, I'm gonna bring the gain up. and I'm gonna bring the start down. So it's doing the opposite, it's quite cool. So that start knob here can be useful. It's again, it's the starting point of your dynamic range. So it can be quieter or louder, depending on what you're gonna do. Now on the Pro Q3 to have something similar, I'm gonna have to boost my uh, frequency band and bring down the dynamic range. but it doesn't sound quite the same, you know? So that's why having those controls, the attack, the release, and the ratio adds a lot. So those are the main differences that we have between Frequency 2 and the Fab Filter Pro Q3. My conclusion, I still love the Fab Filter Pro Q3. It is an amazing plugin. It has a lot of advanced features that we don't have with Frequency 2, like I mentioned earlier. The GUI looks way better. It's very nice to work with. Very easy also to work with. You create a band, you just double click and that's it. You wanna create a high pass filter, you double click on the edges and you have your high pass filter. And on the other side, the low pass filter, super easy. Um, stuff like that, you know, that actually speeds up the workflow. And the fact that you are not limited to X amount of bands, like to eight bands, if we compare to frequency, is also a plus. However, 
the dynamic side of the Frequency 2 plugin is actually a step above in my opinion, especially the fact that you have access to more than one external sidechain. We can go up to eight external sidechains, which is crazy. All this in one single plugin. And this is a huge plus if you know if you work a lot with external sidechains and dynamic EQ. Um, so this is something that is very nice of the Frequency 2 plugin. So there you go, my friend. This is my take on the Frequency 2 plugin versus the Fab Filter Pro Q3. Leave your comments, questions if you're new here again. Subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. Until next time, take care and see you.